this demonstration we're going to have a look at how we can configure our Outlook web app. So what we'll do is we'll just come into our Exchange Management Console. Once we're in our Exchange Management Console, all we're going to do is come to Server Configuration, Client Access, select my server, NYC EX10, and then we'll just right click once we've selected Outlook web app on the default website and select Properties. So the first thing we can see here is once the properties pop up is we'll be able to see that we've got the internal and external URL set. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to set the internal to be the same as the external URL. So that's all done there. Next thing we'll have a look at is authentication. And what we can see by default, we're actually using forms-based authentication. Now we can specify that the user has to put in their domain backslash username or use the user principal name or the username only. What we're going to do here is I'm going to um, select forms-based authentication. I'm going to go for username only, select my browse button, and I'm just going to select the Contoso domain. So we'll select OK. That's all done now. Next thing to do here is just have a look at the segmentation tab. And on the segmentation tab, as you can see, this is what we're going to allow the features that users are going to see. So we can see everything is enabled by default. So what we'll do, just to change something for the sake of changing it, we'll go to all address lists and we'll just disable that feature. Right, next thing to do is on our public computer file access. So what this is going to allow us to do here is if the users come into Outlook Web App and select that they're logging in from a public computer, we're going to enable direct file access and enable the web ready document viewing. So what we'll do here is first off, I think we'll go for direct file access and select our customize button. And what we've got is we've got always allow, and we can see the extensions we'll allow, the main types we'll allow. We'll have a look at the block, so these are the ones we're going to block. We'll then come down for save, to specify which file types we have to save. So again, huge lists. And in the case of unknown file types, what we'll do here is we'll save for save. So this is for extensions, for attachments. So we'll just cancel that. Next thing we've got here is the web ready document viewing. So the web ready document viewing allows us to specify um, inbuilt readers. So what we can do is, for example, if we have an Excel spreadsheet, we could open up within Outlook Web App rather than using Excel to open it. And what we'll do here is we'll just uh, have a look at supported. So we can see the supported documents that we currently have. Now we won't bother specifying anything else. So what we'll do is just cancel this, and that's all now done. So the next thing we want to do here is we just want to actually have a look at the um, four save types that we can put in place. So what we're going to do is we're just going to mess about with um, the Exchange Management shell to specify exactly which um, file types are allowed, disallowed, for save as well. Now we could have done that through the Exchange Management console, but this is demoing the fact that we can also do it through the Exchange Management shell. So what I want to do here is I actually want to set it up so that any XLS extensions are forced to save. So to do that, I'm going to use the set hyphen OWA virtual directory commandlet. I'll commandlet, set hyphen OWA virtual directory. On the default website, we're going to force save file types for Excel spreadsheets. So we'll just hit enter. So that's now set. Other things we could do is we could set up an action for unknown file and main types. We could set allowed file types, set allowed mail, uh, main types, block file types, block main types, force save file types, and force save main types. So exactly the same as the Exchange Management Console. The other thing we can do through here as well is we can turn on or turn off compression. Now the advantage of turning on compression is everything uh, takes up less space. The downside is to compress and decompress files does require CPU cycles. So to do that we'll use the set OWA virtual directory and we'll use the gzip command. So what we'll do here, just clear the screen first. So we've used the set hyphen OWA virtual directory, OWA default website and gzip, we're going to set that to off. Clear the screen again. Next thing we can do here is we can set up web beacon support as well. So we're going to filter out web beacons in HTML forms. Um, these are nasty little th bits of um, code that could potentially um, gather information. So again, just on the default website, we're going to filter web beacons in HTML forms. I'm going to force filter on all of these to get rid of all of that nasty code. So we'll hit enter at this point here. 
That now sets that up. Next thing to do really is just to reset IIS, just to force through those settings. So that's all done. So we've now modified our Outlook web app application. And that's the end of the demonstration. Thanks very much.